All right, everybody. Uh, welcome. It is Friday Night Alive, and we're glad to have you here. You have made yourself to the right place. Now, listen, uh, we set it up differently uh, so that we could have a different kind of experience tonight, and you found yourself a different place. But, you know, we kind of set it up so that we could be a little bit closer. Come on, a little bit closer. Look, that's too close to where you sit on Sundays. You know what I mean? It's just your chair is turned by 30 degrees. You know, come on, come on up, you know, come on in here. And, and here's the purpose of um, tonight, you know, the purpose of tonight and the purpose of it being in the round right here is so that we can look at each other. You know, the back of your head does not smile at me when I worship, you know what I mean? But when I look at you, when I can see you, uh, and so we, we want to be able to engage tonight, and uh, we're so glad to have Brother Willie here with his family. Yeah, the family's here uh, to help us tonight. And um, my goal, my desire, hey, yeah, uh, uh, if, if uh, Melanie, can you tell everybody they need to come in here? Uh, Pastor Kerry, go grab them. But here's, here's our desire, here's our expressed desire for tonight, is that the Lord would come into the room, right? And we wouldn't need screens or words or anything because our spirit man just takes over and we understand, you know, in the spirit what needs to be done. And so uh, tonight there's just freedom in this place, um, there's liberty in this house. Uh, we're going to get into uh, worship, we're going to get into the word, we're going to do everything. Uh, but tonight is all about new beginnings. Tonight is all about something new, fresh starting, right? We just entered into the month of Sheshvan, um, which is the month when the flood started. And it's the month when the flood ended. <laughs> it's when God made his great promise in the heavens. And he said, never again will I destroy the earth by water. And he says, I will make this covenant. And he put a giant rainbow. And how many of you have seen the double rainbows lately? A lot of double rainbows happening uh, and, and just full rainbows. And so we're believing we're entering into a new season. I heard uh, even tonight that there is a couple of you that are starting new jobs, moving into new houses, starting new diets. New, new, new. There is just new is in the air, all right? And so, um, you know, this is going to be interesting if we all, you know, kind of sit over there, you know, and some people over here. You know, it's going to be interesting. But you know what? Be a freedom. Be a liberty. But let's fill in over here. Come on, second rowers. Come on, over here. Right there. There you go. All right, Henry, you got the announcements for us? Good evening, Fountain of Life family. Is anybody joining this house for the first time today? Is this your, anybody's first time in the house today? If you could please raise your hand. If not, that's okay. Um, welcome. This is Friday Night Live. This is our first time doing this. I'm really excited. It's going to be awesome. Um, second, we have... Uh, tomorrow we have a softball game for our softball team. It's six and seven. We have Skyline Park come out, support the family, support the softball. We're gonna win. We're gonna do it for His glory, right? October seventeenth, we have our fall festival. We got a chili cook-off. We got bounce houses, which is what I'm looking forward to. We got food, hangout. It's gonna be a good time for fellowship during this fall season to kind of come together. Uh, and lastly, we have something on October twenty-second, twenty-third. We have something called Fearless. It's going to be for the youth. I'm going to be helping lead as well as some other people in our church. It's going to be a great time to kind of get this youth uh, revival going. And I'm really excited. Have a good night. All right. Here we go. Let's stand to our feet. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for all that you are doing in our lives. And Lord, thank you for the opportunity. We love Friday night. We love to be able to come and just say, it's the end of the week. We're hanging up uh, all of the stuff that we have done. We're heading into the weekend and we're excited about it, Lord. We're excited about how you brought us through and for this new season that, you, that we are in. And we just acknowledge you. And, and, and we ask right now that you would come and that you would just settle in the room. You know, uh, Psalm 23 says that he maketh me to lie down. He brings you sometimes to good places 
but sometimes you're so anxious that you can't really, you're so restless, you're so pressed, you're so tired, you're so... in another season that he has to make you stop. Make you to lie down. And Lord, I thank you that tonight, like a good shepherd, you make us to lie down in green pastures. Lord, we receive from you. We love you. We honor you. We worship you with all that we are. Lord, summon us from every place where we've been and let us enter in to your courts with thanksgiving and praise. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. 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 Let's worship. Hallelujah. Good evening, everyone. God bless you. Tonight, we're worshiping before an audience of one. His name is Jesus.
Spirit. I know you will bring me through. You will bring me through. Spirit of God, we wait on you. Spirit. 
affirmed what he was saying. This is a time where we are coming into our new. And the word of the Lord that just was given to Jody this Sunday, there are some people in here that are needing to break down. I, I forget the song that she had, but the words were exactly it. We need to break our walls down. We need to sit and we need to reside with our Lord. I mean, there is nothing harder for me right now on anything in life than to have learned to trust when you have no idea how to trust. And God is teaching us all that. And we are a church. We are one. We are one together. It's not for the pastors or the leadership to carry. We are going to move into what the word of the Lord was by all of us coming together. And tonight is a night that we sit here and we break our walls down. We say yes to the Lord. It's a soaking time to listen and hear and to read if you need to. Recommit the vision that God has given you. Recommit the prophecy that God has given you. But we need to step out. We need to get bolder. We need to get braver. Amen, sister. We need to make that choice and we need to move forward in it. We can't hesitate anymore. So let the spirit break out over this place and let the spirit break out over you. Listen and heed the word. You all have a calling on your life. Let Lord, I just pray that every calling, Lord God, is brought into a remembrance to each person, Lord God. Father, I pray that the prophecies that have been spoken over them, Lord God, are awakened within their spirit, Lord God. Father, that they pull them out and they realize what you have called them to do, Lord. That we come into alignment as a church and as an individual with the word that you have given over this church, Lord God. That we come into alignment with our leadership that we walk in unity, Lord God, that we walk in your love, Lord God. And Father, that we only move forward and up, forward and up, Lord God. Father, there's no more going back, no more thinking about it. Lord, we are a doing church. We are a doing activated church, Lord God. And I call it forth over each and every person here tonight. Let's keep going. Oh, oh, oh. 
God at work. Um, actually, I have one for both of you, Felicia. Sorry, Willie, this is going this way. I'll get you later. I'm sorry, I forgot your name, babe. Alicia. 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 Can I just come pray for you? Just stretch our hands toward Felicia. We're going to believe for God to heal her. She's going through some physical things. So we're going to believe the Lord to heal her. Father, in Jesus' name right now, we release your healing virtue to Felicia. And as I was watching you up here, I heard the Holy Spirit say, somebody just touched me, and I looked, and there you were, there you were, and I just saw that you touched him, and I just was watching, just like the woman that pressed through the crowd, you touched him, and the healing virtue just began to flow into your body, and we just agree with that right now, that the Lord is healing you from the top of the head to the soles of your feet. We release it even as your song comes forth. It's a healing river. And God, we thank you. We thank you that you grant to her according to her heart's desire. just read this story on Wednesday night, Mark 5, and Jesus says to the woman with the issue of blood, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over, he said to her. Your suffering is over. Your suffering is over. And we declare that over you, that the peace of God settles down upon you and we say as you leave this place your suffering is over Because the Lord's word is in you for you to speak the word, sing the word, declare the word. You're going to have to just be like the word walking. And, and God is showing me how that he will use you to have a word in due season. And that means a word that's right on time. And that you'll, he will make you as his messenger that carries his word that's on his heart for the moment and so right now such as I have I just give you I release that to you that you would flow even from this night forward in a greater unction in the prophetic and that you would walk on out in faith and I know it's going to feel like you're walking on the water but I hear the Lord just saying if you'll if you'll start I'll meet you I'll, I'll meet you there So, God, we just say that healing words will flow from her. Delivering words will flow from her. Words of conviction will flow from her. That 
that you would use her mightily for your glory. And Samuel, the reason I was watching you, you're the one that came up. You were so fast to get up here to pray for your mama. But God was just showing me how that's because you do have a healing anointing on you. And it's not just because it's your mama. It's because it's something God put inside of you, son. And he said, I'll use you. And I'll use your hands to heal and to work the miracles. Alicia, the, uh, I just felt like the Lord said, you will preach my word. You will be a preacher. I know that she called a prophet, but also you're going to have a mighty... Uh, ministry of preaching too so I just feel like the Lord would say that to you too so Father we release all this stuff upon the drone family God thank you Lord thank you Lord for, for bringing them to us Lord thank you thank you Lord we're so blessed to have them here with us Lord we, we love them Lord we welcome them fully into the house at Fountain of Life and into the family here. Let them know, Lord, that they are welcome. They are welcome. They are welcome. Hallelujah. And then Papa had a word that I really agreed with, and he said, let's get all the young people up here in a herd. I said herd. He said, let's get all the young people up here like in a group, not like lined up, but like in a group. That means young adults too, said Pastor Kerry, and college, said Pastor Kerry. That would include, let's see, who else? Jeff and Amber, who are we missing? person that God showed me and uh, the Lord just says a uh, step at a time take it a step at a time and uh, it's uh, this is what I always say and this comes to mind it's not a rabbit race it's a turtle race <laughs> this walk with God is for the rest of your life and I felt like you said um, you don't have to try to catch up with everybody right now he says he's going to have a, a, a time of uh, raising you up just as you can take it, just as you want to be a part of what God is doing because you know uh, you've seen your mom and dad, you've seen it working in, their, in the family, and you maybe you feel like you fell behind. God says you haven't missed nothing at all. And this is a perfect timing for you to be here. And I just want to bless you right now. Father, I thank you for her. Lord, I thank you that you're moving in her life. And Lord, I just pray. I ask you today, Lord, for uh, an enlisting spirit that would enlist your army fresh and new tonight. So I pray. I lay hands on her right now. Jeff, I felt like the Lord said, uh, armed and ready to you. I don't know if that means anything, but that's how, those are the words I heard, armed and ready. And I just saw you, uh, you, you've overcome a lot through this past season with dad. And um, you've seen a lot. I felt like the Lord said, your prayers have moved mountains concerning uh, the things that you, once you, you got in and you bought in 100% like pastor's been preaching. Sold out. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I feel like you are one of the sold out ones too. And so, however God ministers that to you, brother, armed and ready. I just saw you.
backing us up. I saw a big, you were just at a backup. You are backing us up in your position here. Hallelujah. And then Travis. Uh, come here, brother. Glad you made it tonight. How did you get here? Because you heard Mama Lenora tell you. Thank you, Jesus. You guys ran into each other where? At Panera? <laughs> See? God is hunting you down. <laughs> and so, Travis, uh, you've just been uh, a blessing to us, too. And I just want you to know you're not an outcast in any way, shape, or form, son. That you're here. You can, you can come and be a part of this move of God. And I feel like that God's going to use you, too. He's going to, uh, your, your the gift of uh, evangelism where you can stir up the hearts of uh, others and there's a boldness in you to uh, just to speak to others and, and, and draw them like Andrew uh, of uh, the disciples who would bring the go get the boy with the lunch the, the two fishes and the, and the five loaves and I felt like the Lord said there's a mantle on you to draw people to Jesus. And so, Father, I thank you right now for Travis. We bless that in him too, in Jesus' name. And then we're going, now we're going to start to, I just feel like the Lord wants to do something with all of us. When I said that enlisting word, I felt like tonight he was going to release a fire upon uh, you guys because there's a, we've been contending for a youth movement and a young people's movement in this church ever since I can remember. And so he's enlisting you. You can say, hey, you know, I only have a little part-time part in this house. He says, I'm moving you up quick if you will just come in and take your part, no matter what it is. Cleaning toilets, come on, I had to do it too. I mean, whatever it is, God's looking at you to see what you will do when no one else is looking. And he says, There's do I'm doing something in that gener in your generation. And so there's something God's releasing to you tonight, all of you. I have this to say that I heard I he, I so agree with what he was just saying. And then when he's saying enlisting, I got the picture of and maybe you don't know the story, but when Elijah was getting old and he knew that God was going to raise up um, prophets after him. There was, there was a lot of prophets that followed him. There was a school of the prophets. There was a whole big community of prophets. But there was one that said, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to stick to you. And when Elijah came along and put his mantle on him, then Elisha what he did, and this is the part the Lord said to me to mention to you. When, when Elijah came up and he threw it on Elisha, and that just meant, I'm telling you, you can have what I've got and you can come if you want. And Elijah just kept walking. And, and the Bible tells us that Elisha, what he did is he burned his plow because he was plowing and he had 12 oxen and he killed the oxen, used them as a sacrifice, and burned up the wood of the plow. And the Lord was saying to me, you got to get to a point you burn your bridges where you don't have in you anything that says a just in case, or I could do this instead, or I could go back here or go back there, that you're all in. So this anointing is the all-in, the all-in anointing. And I, because you're different than the big bunch of them, like all the guys that knew Elijah, they just, they were watching from a distance. But you don't have to watch from a distance. You can be in the big middle of everything that God is doing. Okay? So let's get the pastor, let's get them all herded up together. Come on, guys. Get all holding hands in a circle, he said. And we need we need Pastor Tim and Carrie and Mel and Daniel help us. And, and the 
rest of you that are here with us, help us. Let's lay hand. We're gonna. I just want to be able to walk. I want room just to walk like this behind them, and then we're gonna just release the fire of God. But hear me. What What's the name of this anointing? I'm what the kids say. All in anointing. Now it doesn't work unless you receive it. So you have to receive it. Because there was 50 other prophets that didn't receive it, but Elisha did. So I believe you're an all-in bunch. You ready? Okay, we're going to just put our hands on you. We're going to release the fire of God. And we're going to release the all-in anointing, all right? All right, you ready?
precious moments that are recorded in the Bible are in small, intimate homes. You know, I have the honor of taking up the offering, and how do you take up an offering when, when the Lord's just moving prophetically? You do it prophetically. That's how you take up an offering. So I'm going to leave the basket right here. I don't want you to feel compelled. You Let the Holy Spirit compel you. But he's not done recruiting. Let's put it that way. The word he gave me for the offering, it fits right in. And it's not shocking to me that he dealt with the youth first. Because as a parent, we tend to say nothing good happens after 10 o'clock. So why are you out? But Psalms 134 says this. Greetings of the night watchers. So if you're wanting to be recruited tonight, he's recruiting night watchers. It says, Behold, bless the Lord, all the servants of the Lord, who serve by night in the house of the Lord. Lift your hands to the sanctuary and bless the Lord. May the Lord bless you from Zion, he who made heaven and earth. And so as, as he's calling forth and saying he wants to take back the night, and he's calling forth who, who, will, who will be recruited, who will put forth the effort, he even says there's a blessing that he pours out for those who will choose to be a night watcher. So as you give tonight, as the Holy Spirit puts on you, we, you know, this is what the Lord wants. And, you know, I know we came here to, to bless the Lord, to worship, but, you know, that's part of relationship that we have with him, that it isn't enough that he just receives everything and all the all the glory and everything. He wants to come and individually touch. That's the way it is. That's relationship. So I know we intended to come here. Hey, Lord, it's all about you. And it is all about him. But this is the result of what happens when he shows up. So let's bless him. I know um, the pastors have a little bit of a message. But if you feel compelled by the Holy Spirit to give, there's a text to give also. Um, do it before you leave. You don't have to jump up and do it right now. I just want you to put it in your heart that that's what it be led to it, all right?
the basket if you want again. Just, can we just stay in this place? I'm just going to say something quick. Are you okay, brother, to play and keep work? No. Worship, are you okay? To keep worshiping? Yes, ma'am. Yes, good. Okay. I, w- I want you to stay in this place with the Lord. And we didn't really have any idea how this was going to look tonight, except for God said to build a place for him to come tonight, to make room for him. And I just want to share something with you that I want you to take with you tonight that I believe is a little bit of what he did inside of you tonight. And so there's this story. You can look at it later. It's in 2 Chronicles 20. And it's about a king. His name is Jehoshaphat. I always said it wrong. And he had news that the enemy was coming. And what I want to talk to you about is the joy that God's going to give you and the victory in the war. Okay? And I want to encourage you with this because... God put something in each of us, some deposit, whether you felt it or not, a deposit was put inside of us here tonight, and the enemy hates it. And do you know where this king heard that the enemy was? In En Gedi. And En Gedi was known to be this hiding place of King David with him and God. It's like an oasis in the desert where he would take his sheep and it's where he hid. And so a lot of times the enemy, you know where he comes? Right to your safe place. Right to your personal and private place with God. The place that was safe. The, the beautiful place of hiding. He comes there. That's where he wants to show up and slither in. Where did he come in the first time? The garden. The face-to-face place. He doesn't play fair. And you know, it says that when Jehoshaphat heard that they were there, it says he was afraid. And that's reality, right? When the enemy comes, there's fear and we get afraid. But you know what it says he did? He said he was afraid, he feared, but he set himself to seek the Lord. He set himself to seek the Lord, and that is what we're doing tonight. It's what we've come here to do, to seek the Lord. And so I just want to give you that practical thing to take with you tonight only five things I'm going to say. (laughs) The first one is seek. To seek him. You might be afraid. It might be the truth that there's an enemy. But seek him afraid. Even if you're afraid, seek him. And that means to search diligently. Even if you're scared. But you know what? He didn't just keep it to himself. He proclaimed a fast. He told other people to get involved with him. And that's what you're doing. Maybe you show, like, barely got here. But you're doing it with other people. You're telling other people, hey, I'm afraid, but I'm seeking God. I know that he has an answer. And then everyone, this is number two. So we saw, we're seeking. Oh, no, well, I guess we're telling other people. Okay, then with everyone, they entered to praise and thanksgiving. And what they started to do was talk about all the things God did. So when the enemy's coming and we're afraid and we're seeking him, I mean, we don't just go like this. We start saying, oh, God, I remember when you did this and you did this and you did this. You came through. You come through every time. I remember God this time. And what's great when you're doing it with other people, they'll say, and I remember this other time. And then it becomes this big heap, right, of praise. Because as enter his gates with thanksgiving, a declaring who he is. And what happens is 
when you're doing that, you start getting out of agreement with the enemy's plan for your life, the enemy's destiny for your life, and you get into agreement with God's promise because that's what they were doing. They're like, oh, no, God, you gave us this land. You gave this to our father Abraham. They started reminding. So the enemy was on their way in the secret place, but they just started reminding God, oh no, that's not our destiny. And that's what I wanna encourage you to do. So when the enemy comes in your car, when you get out there and starts reminding you whatever, you get a choice right then. You get a choice to say, yeah, but guess what? The word that I just got here tonight is that I am enlisted, okay? I have, I'm all in, so it doesn't matter because you know what? None of my stuff belongs to me. It's all his, okay? None of my plans, nope, God only has good for me. So it doesn't matter. So I come out of agreement with the enemy of my soul and into agreement with the Lord. So this is what how we're gonna walk this out, okay? And it says at the end of that, you can go back and look, but they said in verse 12, and you know, yeah, this enemy's really a lot bigger than us, and I don't know how we're gonna get through it, but our eyes are upon you. So even if it looks insurmountable, some of you maybe are dealing with things that like is so overwhelming to you, but my eyes are upon you, God. Listen, there's two choices looking at God's promises for your life. You can look at the giants or you can look at the grapes. Both are there and both are facts. But if you look at the grapes, that's the promise of God. Yes, there's an enemy, but guess what? God rose up on someone as they were seeking God and thanking him, just like he did tonight. He used the prophet apostles. And in this setting, he did. He came upon somebody and God started using that person to speak what God had to say to encourage them, but a strategy for how, what they were to do. And God spoke tonight and gave a strategy. And it's really important that you do not be familiar with the word of the Lord that comes to your life who he uses, because they could have said, oh, well, we know him and blah, blah. If you're familiar, your heart will get hard and your ears dull to hear. So listen to the word of the Lord that was given to you tonight. That is the word of the Lord. And it, number four, listen and believe is what Jehoshaphat said to them. You need to listen and believe. Believe the word of the Lord. God answered and spoke. He said, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Okay, so we're gonna get into the promise as only as we believe. Believe as prophets and you shall prosper. Okay, so God uses his word. He's spoken to you. It sets you free. It unlocks you. Receive that. And then the entire strategy was given to them. And he said, do not be afraid the battle is the Lord's. Position yourself. That's so important, how you position yourself. Because when they came up to the place where the enemy was, this whole valley, they came with worship before them. They had worship going in front of them and they were thanking the Lord. And by the time they got to that valley, it was a valley of death because they all turned on each other and it became the valley of blessing. And everything that the enemy tried to steal, they walked away with so much blessing from God. Why? Because he was with them. So here's the part that I really wanna say. Is that you don't arrive. We're not on what are those things called in the airport that like you get on it? Yeah, okay, we're not on that, okay? You, you don't just arrive there, you have to do it on purpose. And you guys are doing it on purpose tonight. You're overcoming obstacles and I want you to have the tools for this 
to grow in you. Tonight, they worshiped, they praised with a loud voice. They, pray, they said, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. The enemy destroyed each other. And it says they went back with joy. They rejoiced over their enemy. It means they were like laughing, laughing at the enemy. What a difference, right? And I want to encourage you guys because guess what? God is positioning us for harvest. He's positioning you for harvest. These are the days for which you were born, okay? And we came here tonight and some of us got positioned or repositioned. And even if maybe you didn't get prayer, just being here, you're positioning yourself, okay? You can still get prayer tonight if you want. But I want you to make that choice. Like we said, all in, but I'm making the choice that I'm not gonna cycle. I'm not gonna be high up here tonight and down the toilet tomorrow, right? You have to choose to keep going. You have to pick it, it is a war. And in war, you can't just show up and be like, I hope I don't get shot. You can't do that. You have to be proactive. And this is how you're gonna do it. You're gonna seek God. Even if you're afraid and you're gonna declare who he is, I don't care if you have to thank him for the breath in your lungs. Thank him for that. Begin to praise him. Get other people to join you in it and listen to the word of the Lord. Believe it. And let praise be what goes in front of you. Let that be. I, a lot of times I encounter people and you know, the show, you know the guy, Charlie Brown and the one who has the cloud? So many people I encounter have that nasty, cloudy smell in front of them. When, when I talk, I'm like, wow, hey, okay. But if you are doing that, the glory of the Lord should be going in front of you and filling your mouth and determining your position. Are we determined? And Noah watching online, or if you're not asleep, Okay, I think Tim's gonna lead us in some activation before we go. We got pretty activated, but. So good, so good. Um, I, I just wanna come behind that and say, as we're seeking the Lord, Jehoshaphat sought the Lord because he had a problem. So you need to look in your life and define what the problem is or what the thing that you're going See, we've been taught not to go to God with our grocery list and our demand of, I need you to fix this and fix this and fix this and fix that. But the alternative is we show up and we're like, I don't know what I wanna buy. And the worst time to go to the grocery store is when you're hungry and you have no list. You know what I mean? You just buy everything because everything looks good and you just want everything. And then you go home and you're like, I don't have anything to make a meal. I was just like, I wanna snack on this and snack on that and snack on that and snacks don't last. And so sometimes we have to be purposeful. And, and this is why we rejoice in the battle. This is why we rejoice in the war is because we have something that we are fighting for. But if we don't define what that something is that we are fighting for, then the war gets too heavy and we quit. And that's what the all in was all about tonight. That was what the burning bridges was all about. It means, you know, I'm not going back to something. There's a comfort in knowing. I can't go back to what I used to do because I burnt that bridge. I I burned the boat, I sunk the boat, I got rid of the oars. There's no going back to where I was. I am committed to where I am now and there is a way forward and I'm pursuing the Lord in that. And, and no matter what the struggle is, there's giants in the land. Yes, but if you choose to focus on the giants, you'll miss the grapes. There's a promise that you have. The devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to steal, steal, steal every promise God has given you that's the first thing he just wants to take off of the and so we don't fight for our promises anymore and I think that's what what the word of the Lord was is we've got to seek God and say God we've got a problem here the world is suffering the world is 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 losing uh, um uh, meaning the, the world is going into darkness. Lord, we've got a problem here. We've got a light problem here. And we need fixing, Lord. I pray that you would 
fix it in me that I would be a light. And then you just stand there and you stop participating in the darkness because God has given you something. So now you know what to stand for. See, because the world around us is changing all around us. Everything is changing. And if we're not careful, we'll start to change our destination too. Well, I was going to go to Flagstaff, but it's a little too far. So I'm just going to settle for whatever that little town is outside of Flagstaff. Moods or William. William's a little past, but, but there's that little retirement community. You know what I mean? I would not fit in a retirement community. You would not fit in a retirement community. But suddenly you start to say, well, that fits my energy. That fits what I can do. And, and what I hear Pastor Kerry saying is, you got to seek God for the enemy that is out there and for what God wants to do and how he wants to help you overcome and be victorious in the war so that when you are fighting and what you are fighting for, you actually believe is yours. See, because when the Israelites were coming in, they were coming in to take possession of something that had been promised to Daddy Abraham. So they were just coming to reclaim what was theirs. And that's totally different than if you're going and trying to steal a blessing from somebody than to say, what you took from me is mine. I want it back. Give it back. One time we came home, Noah had one of those wife flickers, you know, uh, scooters. Have you seen those? You know what I mean? You kind of wiggle like this and it makes you go. He had left it at the park. And uh, we lived next to the park. So he thought it was safe to leave it at the park like it was our house because it was so close, right? And um, it was gone. We came home one Sunday from church and we saw... Uh, well, on Saturday, we had gone and looked in all of the open garages, right? To see if there was a red fly flicker, Y flicker in there that could belong to, you know what I mean? And, and I encountered some, some of the moms and they were like, what are you doing? And I'm like, checking to see, is that Noah's Y flicker right there? No, that's my son's Y flicker. Get move. We came home from church one Sunday and we saw it. A little girl was on it. Carrie stops and she goes, hey, that's Noah's wife like her. You know what I mean? And she sent us out on a mission to go get it. And it was totally different because it was ours. The young girl that was on it, she just thought she found something at the park. And she was like, this is fun. I'll take it home. Nobody was claimed. There was nobody around to do it. She didn't do anything wrong. She didn't steal it. She just was using it until the rightful owner showed up and said, that's mine. Give it back. And she had no problem giving it back. And if the mom came out and whatever, it'd be like, that one's ours. And the daughter would say, that is her, that is theirs, right? So when you're taking back what belongs to you, what was yours that the devil stole, there's a different authority in it. You understand what I mean? There's a different authority. And so we want to be sold out in this hour. We want to go after him and we want to see the victory of God. And we've got to be convinced that what he has put inside of us and the mission that he has put us on and the, the things that he has called us to, uh, the purposes that he has called us for, that that solidifies on the inside of us so that we move forward with authority and that we give the enemy not any foothold. Carrie mentioned about being in agreement and um, there's power, there's power in agreement. Um, and so what I, what I want us to do tonight is I want you to find somebody that you can share what God is speaking to you right now. It, it may have just been, you know, tonight it's about starting over. Tonight it's about burning bridges. Tonight it's about seeking the Lord. Tonight it's about renewing that. Get with somebody and share with them what God has said to you, what he has spoken to you. And then I want you guys to just, you know, pray for each other and encourage each other because there's power in agreement. Let me say this. Everything that has been created has been created by the word. There's nothing that was created that was not been created by the word. Well, the enemy has words that he likes to say too, right? But Isaiah 54 says, uh, I believe 17, 
No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that rises up against you, you shall. Every what that rises up against you? Every tongue. Every tongue, every, every word that's coming. If we don't rise up and condemn those words, those words form and they begin to prosper against us. But what? We rise up and we condemn them. We refute them. We say no in Jesus' name. See, the devil has power, but he has no authority. And when you give in Ephesians, it says... Don't let anger go into a new season. Don't let the sun go down on your anger is what it says. So a lot of people stay up and trying to resolve problems, right? But it says, don't let the sun go down on your anger lest you give a foothold to the enemy. You know what a foothold is? It's a strategic advantage to the enemy. So don't let anger go into your next season or you'll give a what? A foothold. That word also means jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is authority. A police officer, a Gilbert police officer has authority in his jurisdiction, but as soon as the crime crosses over into another city, He no longer has jurisdiction. He can no longer pursue. He has to, he has to give the right of way to the Mesa police if it's over here, right? When you give a foothold to the enemy, you're giving jurisdiction. You're giving authority to the power of the enemy to work in your life, right? And so what we're gonna do tonight is by the witnesses of two or three witnesses, You're going to break the power of agreement with the words that have been spoken. And you're going to kick the devil out because you have jurisdiction over your own land. And by the word of two or three testimonies, a, a, um, a testimony is established. And so what I want you to do is I want you to say, God, what is it that you're speaking to me about my season, about what's ahead? And Lord, what authority are you giving me to be able to walk in that? And then I want you to just agree with each other. Okay? Ready? Pair up, pair up, pair up, pair up, pair up with somebody. Twos, twos and threes. Yeah, you can get in threes. 